right. Um, for us to be back in the, the regular swing of things, um, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to this year. And uh, something that we talked about over the summer that, um, that, that a lot of our youth are interested in was uh, about diving in deeper, about us going further. And, you know, um, I blame Miss Laura for that song being stuck in my head all summer since BBS. But um, this year with our youth program, we're, we are going to do something. We're going to do something more than just the, the average what we do here on Sundays and Wednesdays. We are going to be reaching out. We are going to be going a lot further in our faith in this next year. And that's my challenge to y'all. That's my challenge to myself. Um, and so we're going to start off with, with talking about living for God. You know, we're talking about we need to do something. Most of the time, all of us feel like there's something more we can do. So we, we, need, we need to do something. But what? How do we go about doing it? And so what we are going to do is we're actually going to take a look at the life of Daniel. Uh, we're going to take a look at the life of Daniel to kind of figure this out. Tonight, we are going to be in Daniel chapter 1. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time if you want to find it. That is the Old Testament. Um, there is a thing in the front. You have a little, little uh, table of contents there. Look there for it to be able to find it. Excuse me. I'm going to give you a second so you can... Locate that. And while you're locating that, I do want to remind you that one of the new expectations we have this year is that during the sermon time, during the talk time, whether it's me or if it's anyone else, that, um, that you make sure not to go to the restroom during this time. If it's an emergency, if your eyes are yellow or brown, then you know, get up and go. But otherwise, wait. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't have a Bible or you didn't go get one, I'm going to be putting it up on the screen so you don't have to worry about, um, about not being able to follow along. For those of you who do have your own Bible, feel free to find that. So what we're going to do is this. We're actually we're going to be reading through the whole first chapter of Daniel. And I know some of you are like, oh my goodness, boring. No, we're, going to, we're not going to read straight. We're going, to, we're going to read and we're going to take stuff out of it. Okay, because often when we read the Bible, it's, we don't read the Bible just to do a checklist. We don't read the Bible because Jack yells at me if I don't. We read the Bible so we can add it to our lives, so we can take away wisdom from it, for what we need. Okay, for what God needs to tell us. And so that's what we're going to do to talk about living for God. Okay, so let me go ahead and put it from here. I'm controlling it from my phone. Otherwise, my phone would be over there with yours. Just, just don't judge all right, so it's good. The, phone, the computer is giving me a little bit of trouble, so that's why it's stuck in the middle. I apologize for that. Um, okay, so we're starting in uh, chapter 1. going to start with reading. So here we go. During the third year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judea, you're going to hear a lot of funny names from me. All right. During his reign in Judea, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Okay? The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judea and permitted him to take some of the sacred objects from the temple of God so that Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me, so Nebuchadnezzar took them back to the land of Babylonia and placed them in their treasure house of his God. Okay? So first things first. Okay, we're, we're starting in here. God is all powerful. God is the ruler of everything. God is in control. And I don't want you to think just because a king came in from Babylon that God is somehow diminished because his kingdom was taken. No, 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 no. Now, sometimes we get to spots in our lives where we're not doing what we're supposed to. Right? Anybody ever done something we're not supposed to? Yes. Yep, my hand is up too. We've all done something we're not supposed to. And there's sometimes that God permits things to happen in our lives that help get us back on the straight and narrow. If you look through the Old Testament, this happens a lot with the, with the people of Israel. Okay, they mess up, and God's like, okay, you know, this is what I'm saying. Go let someone take you over. Okay, we got you back. You're doing good. And it happens over and over again. So this is one of those times God's not any less powerful. It's time for His people need to be straightened back up. They need to come back to Him. Okay? So, continuing on. <clears throat> Sorry. Verse 3. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, we'll go 
that. His chief of staff to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah, uh, Judah's royal family and other noble families who had been brought to Babylon as captives. Select only the strong, healthy, and good-looking young men, <laughs> he said, and make sure that they are well-versed in every branch of learning and are gifted with knowledge and good judgment and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. Verse 5. The king assigned them a daily rationing of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were able, excuse me, they were to be trained for three years and then they would enter into royal service. Okay, now just for you to know, it's pretty commonplace back then. If you take over a place, you take over an area. You usually what you would do is you would gather up their smartest, their strongest, their brightest, and you want to take them and make them your own and make them your smartest and strongest and brightest. All right, so so they, they come in. This is not something that's, that's just special to this event. This is something that often happens. Now, I, and, and in truth be known, this happens to us too. You know, there's the, the enemy, Satan out there, he looks at you and goes, oh man, you got great gifts, you got great abilities, you got great talents. Okay, I'm going to bring you in, and I'm just going to, you know, teach you a little bit about the world. I'm going to, you know, let you know a little bit about, about how awesome you are. We're going to build you up, and then you can promote yourself. You can promote the world, okay? So they're, basically what they're doing is they're bringing them into their side so that they can use them for their own benefit, okay? So that's part of this. Now, the other part of this is, is, True. Now, we're, the, some of the people we're about to talk about of who is captured, that, you know, they are the best. They are the brightest. They are people who are disciplined. They are people who, who study and are, are well-versed and things of that nature. Sometimes we get opportunities, and a lot of times we get opportunities to, to live for God whenever we stand out. Whenever we stand out because of our work ethic. Whenever we stand out because of our of our abilities whenever we're we're willing to get out there and work hard okay so this is something that's going on these people are standing out so moving on to verse six <clears throat> daniel hananiah michelle and azariah were four of the young men chosen <clears throat> all from the tribe of Ju judah okay so were they the only four people that were chosen for this special program no they were not. There was a lot of people pushed over into this program, okay? But they were, they were mentioned by name, and we're going to find out why later, okay? These four were chosen for this program. <clears throat> the chief of staff renamed them with these Babylonian names. Daniel was called Belteshazzar. Uh, Hananiah was called Shadrach. Michelle was called Meshach. And Azariah was called Abednego, all right? We'll learn more about them later. Most of y'all probably know those names. Okay, so these were not the only men taken. There was a lot of men taken. This is going to be very important in just a minute. Okay, so verse 8. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. All right? Now, how many of y'all think uh, you know, a lot of times you eat some foods that necessarily for your health are not very unacceptable? I mean, are very acceptable, right? Yeah, some of you are like, yeah, man, uh, I ate about four extra brownies when they call it the second one. You know, I only had two extra. But um, <laughs> but Daniel, this is something that seems it's fairly insignificant on the big things. They're not saying okay. They they didn't say you can't worship your God. They didn't go, okay, we're pulling you out, and you know what? You can't read your, your scriptures. You can't associate with anyone else. They go, okay, we're going to have this food. They, 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 in fact, they're giving them the best food. But it's food that Daniel, that right now they're living, that God said don't eat, that's unclean. And even though it's a small thing, Daniel goes, okay, you know what? Um... I, I, we can't do this. I do not want to eat this. I do not want to defile my God. Okay, this is kind of like if you want to take an equivalent. This is like if I, you know, I took you, I, you, you were captive, and I go, okay, you know what? 
I'm going to sit you over here. You're going to get the best food, best pizza, the best you know, restaurants you want on your call. You're going to get whatever drinks you want. You're going to get to live in this nice facility. You're going to get to do all these things. But, you know, I want you to start lying on a regular basis. For most of us, for a lot of us, to be honest, we'd probably be like, hmm, I might have to think about that. And in fact, these are the only four that are mentioned, and Daniel and his three buddies, okay, those are the only ones mentioned that even this is brought up, that they're going to do this. Okay, this is something that for, for Daniel, as it goes, you know what, it doesn't matter if it's big, it doesn't matter if it's small, if it's something that God doesn't want me to do, I'm not going to do it. He's offered the best, and he says, you know what, no, there's things on that list that God does not want me to do. So Daniel's already standing out, okay? And it's something like this, for Daniel, what do you think is the most important thing? Anybody, what do you think the most important thing for Daniel is? There we go. I heard it. I heard it whispered. God. God in his life is the most important thing. Therefore, nothing else matters. Nothing. That's what he's going to follow, okay? Whoop, phone cut off. Come back on. we got a horse out there. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So verse 9, let me pull it back up, I won't let that happen again. Verse 9, starting here, we'll read just 9. Okay, so now God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. Okay, so has God left the scene? Is God like absent from Babylonia? No, he's given him favor, alright? So just going back, God hasn't lost any power just because they've been taken over. God is still the all-powerful God. Okay, <clears throat> But he responded, I am afraid of the Lord, the, excuse me, I'm afraid of my Lord the King, who has ordered that you eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I'm afraid the King will have me beheaded. Daniel spoke with the attendant who was, excuse me, who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Okay, please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. And all of us say, ugh. But Daniel said, that's, all right. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. All right, so did Daniel have favor with the chief of staff? Yes. Daniel had favor with the chief of staff, yet did the chief of staff say, it's good? No. He had favor with him, but Daniel was shut down the first time, so he had to go to the assistant. He had to keep going. He had to be persistent in doing the right thing. See, a lot of times for us, what happens is we go, okay, God, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing. And you go to your group and you go, well, I'm not going to party with you and do the things that we're, you know, we're not supposed to do of our age. And they're like, dude, come on. A lot of times we're, we hit that first no and then we're like, okay. Like, no, we've got to be persistent in following God. Living for God, living our life for God, we have to be persistent. It's not going to just be one try. It's not going to be just one time that you're tempted to lie and you don't. You know, it's not going to be just, just one time that someone, you know, you want to make fun of someone and then you decide not to. It's something you have to keep working at. You have to keep going. Okay? <clears throat> so, 15 says this. At the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. <coughs> Sorry. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided to the others. God gave these four young men an unusual aptitude for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom. And God gave Daniel the special ability to interpret the meaning of visions and dreams. Whenever we're living like God wants us to, whenever we're doing even the small things, 
God blesses us. Now, it didn't say God blessed him with a whole bunch of cash or a nice car or, you know, or chariot, I guess. You know, it doesn't say that. God, God gives him gifts. God gives him abilities. God gives him insight because they were willing to follow him in the little things. God does the same thing for us. Whenever we are, are diligent in going, okay, God, you know, I'm, I'm going to follow you in the little things, God blesses you. God may give you insight. Hey, don't hang out with that group because they're going to be really stupid later and someone's going to break a leg. You know, you know I mean, very well, maybe you may get that feeling. I need, to, I need to not do this. You know what? I need to talk with so-and-so. And I don't know why, but, you know, and they need to hear someone. Whenever we're following God, whenever we are in the midst of going, okay, I'm going to follow you in these steps, God opens up things to you. God showed, that does not mean, that does not mean, I want to clarify, that does not mean that God's going to, if you do everything God asks you to, that you're going to be able to interpret dreams just because that's what God gave to Daniel. No. But God's going to bless you in some way. He's going to bless you so that you can bless others. Okay? So keep on reading. Uh, 18 through the end here. When the training period ordered by the king was complete, the chief of staff brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and no one impressed him as much as Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, uh, Michelle, and Azariah. So they entered the royal service. Whenever the king consulted them in any manner, matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them ten times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. Daniel remained in the royal service until the first year of the king, uh, excuse me, the reign of King Cyrus. Okay, so what do we get from this? See, I think a lot of times we go, um, okay, I want to live for God. I want to live. I want to do great things for God. How we do great things for God is we pursue Him in the small things. We do the little things. Some of, you, some of us look at the Bible, or we look at you know, like these missionaries and stuff like that, and we see these great things we're doing. We're like, man, you know, I'm not walking on water I, you know, like Peter did. I'm not raising people from the dead. I'm, I'm you know, not able to, to bring down fire from heaven. We look at all this stuff and go, okay, I want to do something great for God. And all those people who did those things started with the small things. We can't live a life for God if we're not taking care of the little things. So what are the little things? The little things, like reading your Bible. Honestly, this is the, probably the biggest thing I struggle with in my Christian walk, is reading the Bible on a regular basis. And you know what happens whenever I find myself reading the Bible on a regular basis? I find that, one, I'm less stressed. Two, I find that, that I feel like I have, I, you know, when a situation comes up, that I have a little more wisdom about it. I have a cooler head about it. I don't get mad as much whenever I'm in God's Word. And, it, and it's not like a formula like you read and you feel better, but I read to know and to learn, and then you can't help but start being like what you're reading. I've talked to you about it all the time. If, if we talk a lot, if we converse a lot, if we're around each other a lot, then we're going to start acting like each other, whether you like it or not. Teresa has started um, having moments like me, like where she'll, she'll give a horrible, corny joke. And it'll leave her mouth, and I'll laugh hysterically. And then she, it's almost like instant regret, like when you say something, you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. You know, she'll just make that bad joke, and I'll be like, ha ha, and she'll be like, oh no. <laughs> right, that's, that's what happens. Whenever, you, whenever you're reading the Bible, whenever you're looking at it, and not just reading it just because I'm telling you right now to read it, but reading it going, okay, what does this story say? What does this mean? How does this apply? Then it's going to affect you. It's going to affect how you live. Another little thing is praying. I was talking to several of the youth, you know, what was the biggest thing that God showed me this summer? That I don't pray near enough. I, 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 I'm a pretty committed prayer as far as, you know, that I make sure, you know, I start my day off with prayer, I end my day with prayer. And this summer, God showed me that I need to be praying a lot more in about the little things. Um, a lot of you may know I have a cat, a cat named Gibbs, okay? Yes. 
Um, and Gibbs this summer decided to, to get sick. Uh, yeah, and, and, and he got sick, and he got somewhat serious sick. He, we had to uh, put him in the animal hospital for five days. Um, we won't go into the kind of sickness he had because it's kind, of, it's kind of gross. But anyway, so he was sick, and when we got him back, I had to give him medicine, two pills twice a day. And, you know, cats aren't like dogs. You can't be like, oh, here's a hot dog, eat it, and you're good. Um, no, no, cats don't realize that. For cats, for the most part, what you have to do, now this might be getting too much information for you, but you grab a cat by the scruff of the neck, you hold him, you take the pill, and you, in his mouth. You put the finger down, you got, and if you don't push far enough, you won't eat him. And then you have to, then you have to start again. All right, so I'm in this process. My cat is not happy with me. I'm not happy with the cat. Mutual feelings are going on. I'm, and I have him here, and I'm happy, and he's got this up. And I'm like, you know what? Calm down. I don't like it either. And I have the pill, and there's a big pill and a little pill. And I'm like, big pill first, because, you know, we'll get the big pill all the way a little pill. And it's about the tenth try of me right in the end, right, putting it in. It. And in about the tenth try, I was like, God, help me <laughs> shove this pill down this cat's throat. And I, I mean, literally, I was sitting there, and I was just like, God, help me. Picked up the kind of slimy pill now, and I was like, boom, swallow. And I was like, it was like, it was something that clicked, and I was like, well, why didn't I do that on the first time? <laughs> Next pill, God, help me give this pill to my cat. Boom. That is so awesome. Now, and, and it really is awesome. Now, I tell you this not to be like some magic thing, like you go, okay, I'm on my test, God, I didn't study. Oh, reveal to me the answer. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is this. I'm saying in the small things, I need to go, okay, God, help me with this. Help me to have the right words to say to Parker when he comes to talk to me. Help me to have the, you know, the right mindset whenever I go in to do something I don't want to do. God, help me wake up this morning because it's just a day I don't want to get up and go to school. You know, there's, there's all these things that we, we just leave God out because, like, it's not a big thing. Like, my grandmother's in the hospital, you know, oh, I need to pray now. Now, that's not the only time. Now, if your grandmother's in the hospital, you can need to pray. That's a good thing to do. But it's not like that's the only times you have to wait for. It's not the only, only time. You know what? I'm coming into work. My like, God, give me some focus today so I can get my work done. But here's the deal about it, too. One, it needs to be sincere. It's not like um, your lucky rabbit's foot. You're like, I'm going to rub it before I go up to bat so I make sure I get a hit. Or, you know, or it, it's not something along those lines. It's not a good luck charm. It's going, okay, God, you're the God of the universe. I know that. Help me with this task because I'm supposed to rely on you for everything. For everything. And so it's like, okay, give these little things up to God. Give these things up to God. Your parents are telling you to do something you don't want to do. God, give me patience with my parents. Believe me, your parents are probably playing, play, afraid, God, don't let me kill my kid today. You know, and, so, and a lot of times I'm like, thank you, God, for this awesome kid. Um, but other times. But we need to be praying a lot more in the little things. And it adds up to the big things. Pray without ceasing. This is what it's talking about. You know what? If you get in a relationship, God, give me wisdom in my relationship. You're going out on a date. You know, high school, it's overrated. Wait till college. Anyway, um, but you're going out on a date. You go, okay, God, give me wisdom in what to do. You know, make sure that he's nice, not a jerk. Make sure she's nice, not a jerk. You know, things of that nature. Pray over all of it. We're going to talk about later in Daniel's life where prayer was a huge part of his life. And it needs to be a part of ours. And the last little thing that you need to be doing is going, okay, God, what would you want me to do? Asking that question. You know, the WWJD bracelets came out uh, were like really big whenever I was a kid. And everyone had them. And it's, you know, what would Jesus do? And it's almost kind of like kind of like a thing to make fun of people now whenever you hear it and you bring it up. But really, we need to be asking our question. What would God do in this situation? You're in band, okay? Now, I know like half of you are. You know, you're in band, and someone in your section is just not being very nice, not doing their work. Don't look at anybody right now. Don't look at anybody right now. I saw some eyes shoot. Something. 
Okay, someone's just, someone's just being mean. Someone's not doing what they're supposed to. You go, okay, God, how would you handle this? Jesus, what would you do in this situation? Because what do we want to do in that situation? We want to be like, hey, do right. As far as I know, Jesus never grabbed anybody and, and did that. That's not listed in the Bible. I've checked. Okay? We need to look at all of our situations and go, even the small ones. How many of you have to do chores? All right, for those of you who don't, man, come on. All right? Yeah, I have to do chores too. Uh, yeah, we're expecting you kid. I get to do a lot more chores. But it's okay. It's worth it. Um, but whenever you have to do chores, how many of you have ever contemplated the, this thought, I hate my chores? Right? Always. How many of you think, and I'm just going to throw this out there, this is not recorded in the Bible, but how many of you think Jesus had chores? I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he had things he was required to do. Jesus had homework. He did. Yeah, I know, right? Bug eye. All, all Jewish kids at that time, you had to go to school at a certain age, and you learned the Bible front and back. Memorized, memorized it. Memorized it. Now, don't use that in school. Um, they had to learn it. They had to learn it by, by memory. He had homework. Jesus had to do all these things that we do. We need to go, okay. Jesus, how would, how would God handle me having to back you? Me having to do whatever. All right, in the Bible it says, God says, honor your father and mother. Your father and mother have said, you need to do this. Okay, I need to do this. And then the Bible says, you know, either you need to do everything as if you're doing it for the Lord. Okay, and if Jesus asked me to back you, I'd probably be a little more peppy about it. I'm not, I'm not saying you have to be like, I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that we need to look at all our situations. Okay, how would, how would God want me to handle this? The, from, the, from the big to the small, we got to do that. Because that's how we start. We don't progress on to bigger things. This year, you don't change, you don't grow, unless you decide, I'm going to start taking on the little things. I'm going to take this little bit, that little bit. I'm going to take what little I'm given and use it and grow with it. This year is going to be a phenomenal year, I believe, for our youth group as a whole. We're going to be doing things. We're going to be doing a work day. Uh, we actually already have um, a person in mind that we're going to be building a, a very small porch for them. We have some people that we might be building a ramp for. We're going to be getting out there helping our community. We're going to be taking mission trips. We're going to be taking uh, going up to Blue Ridge. We're going to be doing some retreats. We're going to be doing all these activities. And we're going to be snowbird. Yes, whoa. Um, but we're going, to be, we're going to be doing a lot of things, and it's going to be a lot of growth, but it comes down to you. And it comes down to you going, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm going to take care of this. Most of you right now, I'm not, don't volunteer, don't raise your hands. Most of you right now know what one of your biggest struggles are. Most of you right now can think of something that like is not your best. That you go, maybe it's prayer. Maybe you only pray before meals because you're required. Or, or you know, you don't do that a lot. Maybe for you, you don't ever crack open your Bible. Maybe you don't even have a Bible. And if you don't, let me know. We'll take care of that. Um, you know, maybe, maybe for you, it's like, I really think of myself before anything else. Always. we got to take little steps. we got to take care of these little things to where we can grow as a group. We can get bigger. We can get stronger. We can become forces for God. Because you know, you know what my job is here? My job here is not to entertain you, although I try. But I, you know, my job is not to entertain you. My job is not just to keep you coming back. My job is to equip you to be able to reach the world of Christ. And if we're not doing that, then why am I here? Why are you here? Why do we come on Sunday nights if we're not wanting to grow? So this year, when we start, we're going to start doing something. And we're going to start with living for Christ. So my challenge for you is this. My challenge for you is I want you to look at, when you go home tonight, I want you to look at, I want you to think about your life. Okay, what small thing do I need to just do more? And whatever it is, this week, I want you to do it every day. If it's prayer, I want you to pray at least ten times a day. Double digit prayer. Okay? If it's, if it's reading your Bible, I want you to dedicate time. Set it aside. Read it. Just a little bit. 
For those of you who don't know what to read or whatever, Romans 12, just read that chapter every day. If you, don't, if you can't think of anything else, I, I, I'm in a habit of doing that. It's an awesome book of the Bible. Read it. If it's asking God, okay, God, guide my steps. Let's do it. That's what I want from you. That's what I want you to do because I believe you can do it. God hasn't put you here. Putting you here? That's not good English either. Um, God hasn't placed you here to sit on your butt other than during worship time. But God hasn't placed you here to not do anything, to not be active. So let's start with the small stuff. Will you pray with me?